that note, greetings, I'm Rob Chappers. And I am the captain. We're at andertons.co.uk. <laughs> That's the one in sunny Guildford. Mm. Uh, and welcome to the year 2013. Happy New Year, everybody. Although we're in 2012, talking to you from the past. So if the world ends... Yeah, fine. absolutely, yeah. If yes. the Mayan calendar This could go correct, to nobody at all. <laughs> it's a waste of time. Back in the room! <laughs> I've got a guitar. So have I. And they're made by Fender. And uh, 2012 saw the um, replacement of a, a long-standing few guitars in the Fender catalogue from their vintage reissue series um, with a new range called the American Vintage Series. So, the... Um, so you've probably realised that in, in the, or if you're a real kind of guitar geek, you'll have seen that the 50s and 60s reissues that are currently, or certainly were available before this range came out from Fender, were a sort of a amalgamation of different guitars. So they'd never actually said, oh, here's a 62 Strat, or here's a 56 or a 57 Strat. Well, it's understandable said, because during the 60s, yeah. they would have changed their models yeah. over and over and over exactly. again. Exactly. So, so in the old catalogue, you just had a 50s reissue guitar and a 60s reissue guitar and it was a kind of an amalgamation of various features from various guitars during that period. The new Fender CEO um, is a massive vintage guitar nut with a big collection of old vintage Fenders himself and he said you know what we need to do we need to basically make a proper you know geek friendly series of vintage reissue guitars. So we're now going to run through just a few. Rob and I have only got four guitars from this range and there's there's a ton of different guitars in different colors that, are, that you know, from uh, including Strats, Tellys, Jazz Masters, Jaguars, Basses, but they're all totally correct to the year. So for example, this one that I'm holding here, which is a, a vintage Sunburst uh, 65 Strat in three color Sunburst, sorry, has the exact correctly stamped uh, bridge saddles, the exact correctly wound pickups. Actually, on that note, here's a good example of what they used to do in the old series. The 52 Telecaster and the 62 Telecaster in the old series just had the same pickups in it. Hmm. So it was just a, they just decided that there was a set of pickups that were wound in a vintage sounding way, so that was what they would use. Uh. These now will have, they would have taken the pickups out of a, a 65 strap, understood how they were wound, what was characteristically unique about them, and wound a dedicated set for this. So they're now, there are no two models in the current American vintage range using the same set of pickups. So every guitar you see has got a unique set of pickups in it. So the way the necks are um, rolled and, and the, the fretboards and the frets and the colors, uh, even the way they apply the finishing, they're all unique. <coughs> it's a so, bit of a double-edged sword because what you get is something that's absolutely historically correct. Mm. And if you get a real vibe and a buzz off of knowing that this is exactly the way it would have been, then it's going to make you play differently because you're going to connect with the instrument in a different kind of way. Just like picking up a yeah. real vintage, you think it's got that vibe to it. Yeah. So you get things like your single ply, quite thin, yeah. uh, you know, scratch plate, and you get things like the sort of the right frets for that period and the sort of same you, gauge you, neck. You could actually demonstrate, couldn't you, quite clearly now, on the early Fender stuff, this is a, a 58 Telecaster. Um, and it has the very round uh, seven and a half, is seven and a half or nine seven and a half? And a seven and a quarter inch fretboard radius. Yes. Now again, if you're, in order for you to sort of understand fretboard radius, you, you have to kind of imagine a, a circle um, and imagine that circle had a, a seven and a half inch radius, so the distance from the center to the outside of the circle, and you'd get an idea of a shape. And if you cut a piece of that circle out, that's the equivalent to the width of the neck, that's how rounded hmm. the, the neck would be. So the bigger the circle, the bigger the radius, if you like, the flatter the piece will be as you hmm. cut it out to make the fretboard. So that you could, Rob will ably demonstrate now what the downside is of having a very heavy radius. Well, that's a little bit harsh. I wasn't going to do this. No, but you this should. Is, well, I'll have to turn my amplifier on first of all. You do this. <laughs> it goes off. <laughs> it just, it dies. But and the thing is, it makes you realise why we in the year 2012, did all these updates and made yeah. them modern and sort of triple and ply it, binded. And it kind goodness. of also as well make, uh, you know, makes sense now because a, a, a fairly heavy radius, um, you know, fairly heavy curve on the fretboard is actually really comfy for cord work down here. Yeah. It's got a lovely feel to it. Um, but
but as Rob just ably demonstrated, extreme sort of bends with a with a sort of an action that we would consider not low, but you know playable. It, it chokes out up the top. So just because like, they weren't thinking yeah. about people doing that kind of thing back then. You know, no, that that's true. That wasn't the current norm. Or, or you know, or you'd have had to have had just a much higher action, and then you you might have got away with it. Um, so take us through some of the tones that you've got on this beautiful <coughs> 58 ash body telecaster. Yeah, well, we're using the JMP. Yes. One by not, Marshall. Not the rack thing that you guys might think, but the 50th anniversary <laughs> reissue JMP they were head. awesome. Yeah. Uh, so, nice low wattage shell. We got it absolutely cranked the way yeah. that a vintage person would do. Vintage person? And, and to be honest with you, the reason we've done that, and I've got a, a Fender Hot Rod Deluxe, so <clears throat> we've tried to get you know an old vintage uh, Fender sound and an old vintage Marshall sound to sort of go with these vintage yeah. guitars. And I'm in a 1936 lead cab, again by Marshall, so I've got the Marshall kind of sound with the Telecaster, something that I suppose back then probably wouldn't have been. Well, you wouldn't have got Marshalls in the 50s. Yeah, that's um, what I'm thinking. So you, you'd, have, you'd have probably, who would have been your earliest well, it would have kind been of... Vox, group? Fender. Yeah, it would have been Voxes or Fenders. I mean, I suppose in fairness, your first kind of guys that you'd have seen using Telecasters with Marshalls, wow, I guess it would have been probably, you know, Johnny Cage. Yardbirds type stuff you yeah, know yeah. um so you know bear that in mind here's the bridge pickup Put it in the middle, you get a little bit more honky hollow woodness. And then the neck, you get that kind of barky 50s bite. Uh, what you should notice as well, uh, we're still in 58, we were still on the, the three uh, big chunky kind of saddles. Yeah, that they're, you not brass, had, they? but they're not brass, are they? They're not brass. So that you've got to go, I'm not, to be honest with you, the, the geeks amongst you will be able to, to, to sort of comment underneath and, and tell us. I notice these are obviously sort of steel uh, saddles. If you go back to the 52 telecast which you've got, they are brass. And I wonder what the thinking at Fender was between sort of changing from steel to brass. So yeah, on my strap, which as I mentioned was a 65 strap. Now 65, um, there's a little bit more chunk on the neck on a 65. Now um, I'm kind of, I don't know if it's like a getting old or just playing more guitar or whatever, but I'm I'm getting into the, the chunkier neck. Oh, no, I, I am too. I think it's just yeah. as you grow into playing lots I used and lots. to, and I've never really liked super thin, like Ibanez type necks, but I was always a sort of a, the current sort of Fender, sort of 60s, like early 60s sort of radius, like you get on a modern Strat. And I still do like that, but I used to really dislike fat necks and I'm kind of into them a bit more now. It's got a really thin, kind of rosewood fretboard on here, only like a couple of mil thick, so it looks thinner than a current American sort of strap fretboard. Um, nice piece of uh, alder here um, with a beautiful three-tone sunburst. And as I said, we've got completely correct pickups on for a, a 65 strap. Um, the vintage style trim system. There was something about the, the, the little uh, patent pending stamp that's used on on these saddles which which isn't on the current uh, or on the, the previous sorry vintage you know, I was good, I was literally ready to ask you is it still patent pending or was this something that they did <coughs> you'd like to you, think you stole Fender it away from me got their it? act together by now <coughs> wouldn't it you know is that still patent pending 60 years later oh damn it I keep meaning to send that letter off with the, like a yeah. half a p stamp on it or whatever it's it is. Well, yeah I yeah. I'd like to think well they probably got the patent and it's probably expired by uh, now as well right yeah Anyway, I don't really understand how patents work. But. Um, got the truss rod access at the bottom of the neck here. Something which, again, is very common on sort of vintage guitars. Oh, same with mine, same. Yeah, same with mine. So kind of annoying if you want to adjust the neck because yeah. you've got to take the neck off the guitar. It does to really make it. you appreciate all the changes people have made and why. Yeah. You get this, I think you get these for the vibe. You get you that, definitely that get feeling these for the vibe. of wanting them for that kind I always, of I always say, when, when old guitars are like 
old cars. You know, you see a V, uh, you see a E-type Jag drive past you from the 60s, or uh, an old like the James Bond, you know, DB5 or something like that. You see that drive past, and it's a head turner, and we all want to own one, and they just look gorgeous and beautiful and there's lines about them but the reality is you sit in one you've got no power steering you've got no abs brakes you've got no comfy you know sort of seats no air con all that kind of stuff so you sort of it's a little bit like these with guitars that they're, they're just you know they're beautiful to own and they have a certain characteristic that, <coughs> that you, we all fall in love with so back in the room um i've got the 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 first guitar that uh, where the actual Telecaster name was used. Uh, this, so this is a 52 Telecaster. This guitar did exist for a couple of years before that but was called a Broadcaster and then in a dispute with Gretsch over that name a No Caster whilst it had no name. So this is the first sort of Telecaster. Again the, the thing you notice instantly when you pick this up is the biggest neck of the lot. It's, it's a, enormous. It's, it's yeah. kind of like if I just did a gorilla sort of shape with my hand like that uh, it's that's literally it, isn't it? Straight yeah. in, Bosch. Thanks yeah. very much. I think that's because they they would have played some bass on that type of Telecaster, wouldn't they? On early versions of these, and this one isn't wired like this, but the, the, quite a lot uh, in the early days, the neck pickup had a um, some sort of capacitor or resistor on the circuit that rolled all the treble off. So you got this kind of. Um, you got this kind of sound as a default out of the neck. Uh, whereas obviously you'd expect it to be a lot brighter. Um, so, and on Fender used to do that on some of the, the vintage reissue ones and you, you could, you had a, a rewiring kit that used to come with the guitar as standard so you could, you could essentially wire it like a regular telly. Mm. Um, ash body in the fabulous oh, combination of butterscotch with a black yeah. scratch plate, maple neck, as I said, super chunky and the original gigantic look like bullets. Um, Own bullets. Yeah, on, on the <laughs> saddles here. And, and we haven't sort of mucked around with any of the amp levels or anything like that, or set these up any different, but this is loud. This is the first thing that Stick the sound man said when I, when I went like this. He went, oh my God, it's about twice as loud yeah. as the one you had before, which it is. So I don't know whether that's because the pickups are wound hotter or whether it's something to do with the brass saddles or just the, the you know, the characteristic of the fat neck or whatever but see for me this is a telecaster blackguard butterscotch it just absolutely looks the piece doesn't it it's yeah i mean it's crazy isn't it i think if somebody said would you buy a car in this color or anything in this yeah. color you just go no, no it's yeah. on its own or in a different <coughs> context it's but it a works. pretty vile color but on a you know on a telecaster with a black scratch plate uh, it's just and correct, that's, isn't it? That's it never more shown in detail than when you prop it up against a little Fender amplifier and take a photograph or shoot some video because it just suddenly looks completely legit. So let me hear, I'm using a, a Fender Hot Rod Deluxe and I get sounds like this. So this is my neck pickup. So very, very warm. I can have both pickups together. or the daddy Telecaster sound that we all know and love. The sound that says, I'm here! <laughs> I'm needing all of my dread ear protection to stop that from destroying my ears. Yeah, it's just, it's just a sound, isn't it? You buy a guitar like this, or you know, even a cheaper Telecaster, but you buy a guitar like this, and you have no tuning problems, no heavy maintenance issues, uh, you restring it in two seconds uh, and it just goes, you put it on the back pickup, a <coughs> little bit of grunt and it's just classic rock I and roll. I played one of these guitars for you about did. the first five years of my career as a guitar player. And you played a very similar version of this in Fretted Americana when we went there. Uh, uh, the, was yes, it the I 50... Did. It was a 50 something. Was it it a was 100,000 dollar, whatever it was. But it was, yeah. you said like best telecast yeah, you ever played. Absolutely ridiculous, yeah. 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 So what have you got there then? Well, I've got another telecaster in Burst. <laughs> <laughs> oh, three color sunburst. It's a 64. It's got all of a sudden the, the scratch plates upgraded to three ply. 
Um, the neck is a little tiny bit thinner, but not not substantially it's a, thinner. It's a lot thinner than this one. It, well, than that one, yeah, absolutely. That one, yeah, but it's, it's not it's, that much thinner than the the what, no. what was the one you had before the fifty eight? Yeah, yes, that's pretty right. similar to that, isn't the it? The frets are the same gauge. We've got a rosewood fretboard here. Um, it's the string tree on the previous one. Uh, yes, same string tree. And the the one thing that although interestingly, look, it's a different. They've changed the string tree on on the on yeah, the yeah. fifty two. It's round almost dish. literally like a washer. Yeah, just yeah. That, whereas they've obviously kind of again little things like this. Someone's gone. Do you know what the the washer kind of? I suspect people probably found it did maybe pop out and stuff like that. So they've created a proper kind of contour um, string tree. Thing. Yeah. The um. The, well, the one thing that I don't like about this guitar are the saddles because what I found is that. They they got the grooves along them. The strings pop out if you finger pick quite hard. I can see what they're trying to do there. They're, they're obviously I think they they've got the the brass plain saddles on on the, the 52, and you've got the same ones on the 58. And I suspect someone's kind of gone look. It's you know they they can move about. I don't think it causes a big tuning. Well, there's problem, no choice about does. where they go. They go to where yeah. they're going to rest to. But with this, you can choose. Yeah. So it was a great idea. Yeah. But for me, it didn't work because of the way yeah. I play. If you're a heavy it's, picker, it doesn't work. If it, you're a soft picker, it's fine. It's the same problem that you get on the Jaguar and Jazzmaster yeah. sort of vintage bridges, except that of course it's worse on those. Well, certainly worse on the short scale. Yeah, uh, much worse those, on those because the strings are so much slacker. Fact, they're popping around all over the place. We say we say I don't like it. But I haven't really hammered it, so let's just have a little hammer. Go on. They didn't move. They didn't move. They didn't move. I like these saddles <laughs> because I find they offer you more opportunity. 